I'm Dr. Stephen Russell. I'm the Richard O. Jacobson Professor of Molecular Medicine here at Mayo Clinic and I'm also a consultant in um, hematology in the Division of Internal Medicine. And the paper that I'm going to discuss with you today is entitled Oncolytic Measles Virotherapy and Opposition to Measles Vaccination. Uh, and this paper will shortly be published in Mayo Clinic Proceedings. So this is a, a very important topic and what prompted us to um, write this paper, which is, um, it, it's more of a um, position statement and overview of the field of measles vaccination um, than actually a paper describing new data. But what prompted us to put the paper together was that um, I had an email from a very frustrated teacher earlier this year, um, which read as follows. I'm a teacher, and your supportive opinion would go a lot further than all the numbers I can throw at parents. They see your work and make some judgment about measles being protective against cancer. Therefore, do not vaccinate their kids. Please answer. Do you advise families immunize their children on schedule? Now, this was quite an alarming um, email at the time because I had no idea that our work on uh, the use of measles as an anti-cancer agent was going to um, form part of a new argument in opposition to measles vaccination. So I'll just step back and say a little about um, measles, uh, measles vaccination and the use of measles as an anti-cancer agent. So measles is still a very, very important uh, disease globally. It was responsible for the deaths of over 100,000 children in, in the year 2017. And the reason it's such an important killer is because it suppresses the immune system. During the course of a measles infection, the immune system is really significantly um, impaired and as a consequence there are opportunistic infections and those are the major cause of mortality due to measles as well as a lot of morbidity. So clearly it's a disease that uh, needs to be eradicated. The question is why when we have an effective vaccine available are so many people still vulnerable to measles infection? And the reason is that um, the global reach of the vaccine is limited. It's very difficult to deliver it in war zones but in addition to that, there are people who don't want the vaccine. And this is a big problem. So uh, especially now um, in a lot of fairly well-developed countries where uh, vaccine coverage should be at a very high level, um, people are refusing uh, to have their children vaccinated. And the main reason for that up until now has been the concern that vaccination is associated with the development of autism or autism spectrum disorders. Now, it's, it's sort of unfortunate that the vaccines given around the time at which children typically show the first signs of autism. So it is inevitable that there are going to be cases of autism arising around the time of vaccination. And you can understand why the poor parents with the autistic child are thinking it was that doctor or nurse approaching my child with a needle and vaccinating them um, or it was something in that vaccine that caused the autism. But uh, enormous studies have been conducted, cohort studies, to look at whether or not there really is an association between the administration of these vaccines and the development of autism and there's just no evidence to support it. But nonetheless, the, um, the vaccine refusal continues. So you can imagine, in light of that battle that's ongoing to persuade people of the value of measles vaccination, we were very concerned to discover that now um, our work using measles as an anti-cancer agent um, was also being implicated. I if I step back and say briefly, um, where we're at with measles as an anti-cancer agent. There are occasional case reports of people who, during the course of a measles infection, have seen regression of a pre-existing cancer. This is rare, and there is no evidence 
that measles infection can prevent the development of cancer. It can impact a cancer that already exists, very rarely, but it doesn't prevent cancer. In light of that natural um, experiment of nature, we started to develop a, an attenuated strain of measles as an anti-cancer agent, and the results were encouraging. Um, we've uh, collectively, the authors of this manuscript are all the people who've been working together over the past 20 years to develop measles as an anti-cancer agent. And we've been spurred on by occasional successes and we've learned a great deal about how measles can work as an anti-cancer agent. And what we know quite definitively now is that the best responding patient that we ever had who uh, was reported in a previous manuscript at Mayo Clinic Proceedings and who is still alive to this day in complete remission six years out from her measles uh, virotherapy had been vaccinated against measles as a child and subsequently was revaccinated against measles after her first stem cell transplant. And the circumstances that led to her having such a good response to the measles vaccine were number one that she had very strong anti-measles t-cell activity number two that she had because of her disease no anti-measles antibodies so the virus was able to access via the bloodstream her tumors and then the anti-measles t-cells were able to come in and help destroy the tumor that's at least the um, current model that we're working on uh, as to why this patient responded so well. And in light of that, what we're doing is we're developing new approaches using cellular carriers to deliver the virus to the target site and evade antibody, or developing new configurations of the virus that are not recognized by the antibodies that exist in vaccinated individuals. So really we do see that anti-measles T-cell immunity as being an important part of what gives you a good response to measles therapy uh, if you're one of those lucky ones who does respond. And that's the main thrust of our current development effort. So to come back to the original question that prompted this position statement, it's an absolutely emphatic yes children should all be vaccinated on schedule um, with the MMR vaccine. Um, there's no evidence for an association with autism and there's no evidence whatsoever that there's going to be um, a better response to measles virus therapy down the road should a patient um, uh, get cancer. So, in conclusion, Strange though it may be seem, we actually want people who are treated with measles virus for cancer therapy to be immune to measles. So we want them to be previously vaccinated. And we're attempting to exploit that pre-existing immunity to increase the anti-tumor activity of the viruses that we're currently uh, developing and advancing clinically. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.